What is your I don't get paid enough for this shit moment? Plumber, owner of a mobile home called and said they had a stinky yard. I could smell it when I pulled up. The mobile home was new and had only been set up for about 8 months. While setting it up, someone didn't tighten the no hub band of the toilet in the kids bathroom. 8 months of flushed toilet was all over the ground, under the home, and had just started being noticed outside. I told the home me I wanted to call the guys that set it up to come fix it. I wasn't crawling under there. Oh god. And it must have been smelling long before it got that bad. I'm picturing them walking around their house for months, asking what is that smell. It had brick underpinning, so it mostly was just pooling underneath the home. It's amusing that your username goes along with that story. I worked at Circuit City when I was 17. Heard a noise of packaging being opened in the movie section. Found a guy crouched down cutting open DVD boxes and stealing the discs. He looked at me, held his knife out, and said got a problem? I just replied I don't get paid enough for this shit and backed off. I went to the back room of the warehouse area to call a manager to tell them what happened. Never could get a hold of anyone, so I just chilled in the warehouse area for a half hour to decompress. The wise choice. Why get shanked over some ducking mega core DVDs? Imagine getting killed over Big Mama's house. Imagine getting caught stealing Big Mama's house. When I was doing 90% of my boss job in hopes of a full time promotion that I had been promised for 3 years and he took all the credit and told me my promotion wasn't in the budget. Bro duck that. Yup, I left 2 weeks later. I'm a public librarian. I was helping someone in the computer room and turned to tell someone he needed to keep his exclamations at the video he was watching down. Just then, the woman I was helping leapt aside because the man I was shushing pissed himself. It ran down onto the jacket he had tied around his waist, down the chair, onto the ground. Turns out he'd snuck in alcohol and was totally blackout drunk. I told him he had to leave. He put the piss covered jacket on and stumbled out. As I returned with gloves and cleaning supplies, another patron decided this was a good time to complain about some kids who were making noise. I took a deep breath and said this is a good time for us all to appeal to our higher selves and do our best in the moment. Please just adapt for a minute. Then I thought about the student loans I took out for the master's degree as I scrubbed up this. I took a deep breath and said this is a good time if we all just appeal to our higher selves and do our best in the moment. Please just adapt for a minute. There really ought to be some kind of beatification process for librarians. Absolute saint. I worked at a heating and air conditioning company doing bookkeeping. I was being trained by the company's accountant. If I made a mistake the owner would literally scream at me full voice. I overheard him talking to his brother and his brother had told him not to scream at me. The owner said, you have to tear them down to build them up. I decided I wasn't going to take another day of his screaming after that. Nor should you. I'm a CPA and used to do bookkeeping. No way in hell should you ever let someone treat you like that. Grocery store cashier. The customer was angry because her cereal had rung up wrong. I called a price check and this lady berated me the whole time. I recall that she accused me of trying to steal from her. Said she was going to get me fired. I looked at her and said, I make $7.25 per hour, no matter how much you pay for this cereal, so I do not give a shit how this situation turns out. She stared at me in shock. The price check comes back saying the price scanned correctly. Silence. I said, so do you want the cereal or not? She said, yes. And that was that. She did not complain to the manager. I ran the entire company's financials and general management for $14 slash HR. I had a meeting with the owner telling him I need a raise and to hire an assistant. He told me I wasn't business minded and should be a stay at home mom. I quit the next day. That was so disrespectful. Bagging groceries at a major supermarket. The manager came over to tell me that I needed to clean up the bathroom. An elderly gentleman fell off the toilet while pooping, and it was a literal shit chow. Apparently I was the most qualified, because I was 16. I was handed a broom and a dustpan. I shit you not sorry had to- My reward for going above and beyond the call of duty? 
$5 in store coupons. Sometimes dreams really do come true. Not sure about your country, but growing up I always got out of that by saying I haven't been trained in hazardous materials or biomaterial handling and disposal. If you train me and provide the proper protective equipment I'm happy to do it. They'll always find someone else, as technically it is by our hazardous material, and by law at least where I'm requires a bunch of BS. No employer wants to even think about the Ministry of Labor. I know that would work in America, but also, biohazard training is a joke. You watch a like 8 minute video, and they show you where the special biohazard bucket is, and guess what the bucket contains. Standard cleaning supplies and extra gloves, nothing special, just average stuff that's been put with the bucket. I was a manager for a well known lingerie store. Our location was in a failing suburban mall. The store was giant and shaped oddly. There were dressing rooms in odd hidden corners and a few blind spots. The store was located at the end of the mall next to other stores no one really went to, so there wasn't much foot traffic. We were also always short staffed, because no one wanted to work out there. All of those factors made us a prime location for thieves and weirdos. I would have to do laps around the store due to its layout, and I would regularly come across people doing sex stuff in this one secluded little dressing room. The dressing room was in a sort of alcove, and was the least visible spot in the store, so it was prime real estate for all kinds of shenanigans. It ranged from women doing strip teases for men, to catching couples having oral sex, to catching couples having penetrative sex, to catching men masturbating. The final straw was catching a man at closing time, masturbating into a pile of cotton panties with the dressing room door wide open. I couldn't take it anymore. I put in my notice the next day, and what was crazy was that corporate always shrugged or laughed it off when I would call and complain that we needed a security guard. I was 21 at the time, and every woman that worked there was between 19 to 30, it was a safety issue, and they'd also blame us for all the merchandise theft, which we were unable to prevent, because there weren't enough bodies in that gigantic store to prevent it. I was also dating a guy who also worked in the mall, and he told me that they finally closed up that one dressing room not long after I left. He said a lot of folks were pissed, because apparently that one little dressing room was a well-known open secret spot for hooking up. Same thing happened to me, minus the sex stuff. Huge store, barely any employees, high thefts, no cameras to deter either. Corporate solution? Cut hours even more as a punishment to us, idiots. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more curated daily reddit stories.